Rites of Passage has been involved in this community by having over 50 young people in this community of Parma, Wakanda um, that have gone through their Rites of Passage. You know, they've gone through the process and the elders in the community and the adults in the community have a level of expectation for them or a heightened sense of expectation around them giving back to the community, them being um, self-aware, them being culturally connected. Um, and even to the, to the fact that they have a whole different language and understanding amongst themselves. Hello, my name is Camille Charles. My account day name is Abana. Abana means inspiring, bold, and a determined risk taker. My name is Dion Daly, and my account day name is Kofi. It means a male child who was born on a Friday. My name is Rashawn Farkerson, and my account day name is Corbena. My name is Ziada, and my account day name is Essie, and I'm a Sunday child. And uh, being born on a Sunday means you're confident, passionate, resilient, and a leader. I think Rites of Passage is, for me, is really a Sankofa. It's really a going back and reclaiming and moving forward. The rights process in whatever culture you're dealing with is about moving adolescence to responsible adulthood. So one of the things that we stress in Rites of Passage is that understanding those four questions. Who am I? How did I come to be who I am? Am I really who I think I am? What is my life's purpose? And it's a critical component in terms of um, our young people and giving them awareness, self-identity, but mostly having a roadmap, you know, to kind of craft out their life and acknowledge that they will be going through different stages and we should be different rights, you know, from being a young person, an adult, an elder, an ancestor, for them to understand that process. So definitely, that's what it comes down to. Rights of Passage is, uh, to me, practically a program where it provides awareness, information of what's happening around the world with black youths and like our culture in general, things that black youths would not know if they were born in Canada or America, they get to know once they join Rites of Passage. Uh, Rites of Passage means to me just getting like a sense of like my background and also just getting to learn more about my heritage and where I come from as a young black woman. Why did I join Rites of Passage? Hmm. I think it was to get a sense to learn more about my African history and culture and just to meet up with other like-minded youths. Rites of Passage to me, like this space, a second home. You have somewhere else to go to. Rites of Passage is it's like, it's like transition. It's like entering a matrix and then coming back out of that matrix a whole new person. Um, it's, you're, coming, you're coming as yourself and then you're coming out with a bunch of brothers and sisters because you now, your bond is now strengthened because you've gone through that experience together. It's a program that really had a very positive impact in my life. The support and also being able to learn about your history. I'm of a Caribbean background. Um, I never thought of myself as an African. So being able to see on different side, if you're not just Caribbean, you're African, Caribbean, like learning the different roots and where you actually come from. So to me, that's what Rites of Passage is. I'm getting to go to Ghana and also getting to get like the elders um, experience and also just getting to listen to their story. Artists love to, to talk about honey because when you feel like you want to get angry or you want to just tell somebody else, you're about to tell them some words that you don't want your parents to even hear, put some honey on your tongue, yeah? Put some honey on your tongue and bring some sweetness to your heart. And then drink some water. Been so disconnected to some of the fundamental practices and principles that actually make us who we are, which is people of African descent. Some of the challenges that youth of African descent face today are racism, discrimination, police brutality, lack of self identity, 
lack of familiarity with the culture, their original culture. And one of the issues that I'll talk about something that's happening right now is racism, the Black Lives Matter um, situation that's going on. Rights helps us um, face issues like that by creating a space for us to come together, sit down and talk. It opened my eyes to the realities of um, racism and just like the injustices we see every day. I'd be just like questioning everything that I was being taught, you know, made me want to look more into like African spirituality and that sort of thing. Racism, discrimination, um, shadism, and I think that's a big one because youths today are challenging with the shade of their skin and how they look, their identity outside in the world and with the social media. So I think that's a very big issue facing youth of African descent today. To, to a certain extent, our elders, they're actually damaged to some degree. They are damaged because they have not had the opportunity really to come into themselves as full people of African origin. So Rites of Passage helps youth to address these issues by educating them on how the world usually sees um, black people and just being mindful of taking that in con into consideration that you're not necessarily perceived the way everyone else perceives you as well. Rites of Passage has helped me transition to adulthood, um, a more responsible, a little more focused, um, more patient, less easy to anger. So you're learning about the principles. Um, one of the principles that I really connected with is um, Nia, and which means purpose. And with that connection throughout the entire program, I started to kind of discover what my purpose is that helped me transition into adulthood and to separate passion and career from a purpose. Purpose is actually a big one. So I was a professional dancer for a couple of years in Toronto. And then I was like, um, what am I really doing with dance? Now I want to be a psychologist who works with black youths. I would say when it comes to like just owning who I am and like my background, um, I would say like I maybe I struggled with it for a bit throughout high school and then like once I was done, I did, um, own it and now I'm just proud of who I am as Malika. My hair is natural. I'm much more comfortable with my natural hair. I actually feel very um, strange after I have um, extensions or anything on for a long time. So it's, it's helped me to see the, the beauty in my natural self. I'm determined to change and inspire people with the sound of my music. Rights is not a program, and that's why we say it's a process. It's about always becoming. And it's also like a good space for youth to be in. I, I think so, so that's why, I'd, well, that's why I'd recommend the Rites of Passage process to other youth. I would most definitely recommend Rites of Passage to other youth. You know, I think every, like, there should be a Rites of Passage program for people of all cultures so that it can apply to their cultures. You know, I especially, especially in the case of black people with um, us being like assimilated and losing a lot of our culture, I think that it's really necessary.
Sarah, Stonia, Marcus, Naisha, Alicia, Matthew, Amira, and we're right to passage from Toronto. See you at the Really? <laughs> 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 The National Canadian Black Summit. It was an event that held space for people of African descent. And being able to draw the parallels and the similarities to the issues that we face and also be able to talk about strategies that could help push things forward for the various issues that the community faces. You know, what stood out to me is just the fact that I was actually in another province, you know, for the first time in my life. Um, we got to stay at one hostel altogether, and so there was some bonding activities that happened. I feel this trip is very pivotal because um, Halifax and Nova Scotia in general has a very deep history um, associated with um, Africa, the continent, the Caribbean. So it was very important for these youth to make that connection. So to go to Nova Scotia and to see that there are other people who are facilitating that kind of change amongst their young people and, and doing that, I think that's, that's a wonderful thing to witness. I didn't really know what to expect with the conference, but I realized that it was a good space to connect with other people. Um, it was really grounding. And just hearing some like authors be there, some really young people even writing, and it just like hits you. Yeah, I even got a book from one of the authors because like her story was really nice too. So another site that we visited was the Black Cultural Center for Nova Scotia with history on the back and, and public figures um, on the front and just kind of seeing where they traveled from and how they ended up where they ended up. I would say that was, that was really nice to, to see. Like that's actually our history, you know? It's not like American history. You hear none of this in school and you would only really know of that information if you've been there. Um, for me, one of my favorite things was going to Africville. We also visited Africville Museum. Some of the people at the museum are 11th generation African Nova Scotians, uh, 7th generation African Nova Scotians, and to be there and touch and listen to them telling the stories of their great, great, great parents um, was uh, quite amazing. The Wrights team, we actually had the opportunity to meet with uh, Carolyn Wright, who's done a lot of great work in Nova Scotia in terms of uh, pushing forward for a lot of issues and concerning the black community. We also got to tour the city a little bit, see restaurants, um, eat the food, and also have conversation with locals. I like it. It's very interesting. It makes me want to travel back to Nova Scotia and explore other provinces as well to study the history there.